Hello, I'm Cricket Ables, and um, I pastor the El Dorado campus. We get the privilege of serving under mom and dad, or you guys know them as Jerry and Elaine, here at the Victory Church, and it is such an honor to be a part. Today, we're gonna to be going into a service that's filmed here at the El Dorado campus, and uh, we preach on hunger. You know, God wants so much more for us than what we're living. You know, our, the devil's not really afraid of our past or our present. The reason he's been fighting you so hard is because of what God has in store for your future. And the Bible says this, that he satisfies all those that are hungry. And so we're going into the service today where we taught on a spiritual hunger. When you can keep a spiritual hunger for God and God's things and righteousness and relationship with him and his way of doing things, there's nothing in life God can't give you, won't give you, and do through you. And while we're here in the service, uh, there's gonna be a phone number come up at the bottom of the screen. If you want prayer or you wanna talk to any of us here at the ministry, we would love to get to know you and pray with you about any need you're going through. So at any point, you call the phone number at the bottom of the screen. Also, you can go to the Victory Church website, it's thevictorychurch.com, and find out any of our teachings or any of the schedules. Also, we have the Victory Church app. You can find it in the iTunes store. Hey, we God bless you. We love you. Hope you enjoyed the service. We're going to go into it now, speaking on spiritual hunger. I don't know if you guys are cookers or not, but I love to cook. That's one of my things. And so what I've done, I've learned this. When I make chili, I make it, I give it to the family, the kids and stuff, but then I freeze it because I know this. When I freeze it and then when I rethaw it, about two days later, it's 10 times better than it was before it went up. The girls, are, the girls are eating crunchy celery. I'm fixing to eat the good stuff. And so I felt like I'd put this one on the back burner and put it, um, froze it. But then, so I tried to start developing a different message because how many of you guys know um, manna wasn't able to hold over? Any of you guys remember those days? They couldn't hold the manna over. And so... Um, I was like, God, I don't want to give people stale bread. I don't want to give people. So I always battled that, um, you know, whether or not giving people stale bread and things like that. But there's a scripture in Exodus, and it says this. It says that the Lord gave the hungry manna. And the word manna meant, you know what they call it? it I don't know what it is. What is it is what the word manna means. They, They had no idea what it is. So I got something this morning that's not going to be stale bread because it's alive in me more than it ever was a month ago. So I'm going to just throw it at you and those that are hungry this morning, you'll receive it. How many guys are hungry today? If you didn't come hungry, you're about to miss out on something great. Um, You guys know you were made more than a conqueror. Now, that's a concept I speak a lot on lately is you got to understand God wants more for you than just to win. There's more there for you than you just to get through what you're going through. There's more for you than you just to get the bills paid and then start over. There's more for you than you just getting through what you're getting through. There's more. That's why he said you are more than a conqueror. Now, the problem with it is a lot of us have no idea what more looks like because we have come to a place where we have learned to live in the area or the arena of just enough. God is not a God of just enough. The Bible says, as a matter of fact, that he, when you have a need, he has more than what you need. But because we don't understand the concepts of God's more, a lot of times, we're happy just getting through winning. I say, I don't know about you, but when I go through a great battle, or say sickness, say division or strife or, you know, suffering, when I'm in the middle of it, I'm just, my prayer usually quits praying, God, I want more out of this. It usually goes to God, I just want out of this. And I try to just get through it. And when the pressure pulls back or when the need has been met or when the pain leaves, I feel like I'm a winner. How many of you guys agree? Like, I don't know if if you're sick. I go back to sickness and, you know, uh, being a pastor in Florida, the first solid year I was there, uh, moving to a different climate and those kind of things, I caught strep throat four times the first year I was there. And um, because of the different climate stuff, and I'm saying every time I got it, I'd be like, God, I believe I'm healed. I, I believe, I thank you that you're healing me. And the minute the pain would quit, I felt like I had won that battle. 
and a lot of times in every area of my life, as soon as the pain or the pressure or the strife is over, I feel like God completed it, but I want you to know something. God has more for you than that. That's why he said he wants you to be more than a conqueror. He wants you to win. That's a guarantee. Winning is a guarantee for you if you don't give up. As long as you don't quit, you will win. It, it will. But the thing about it is, how much do we leave laying on the ground? How much do we, because most of us have no idea what victory looks like. You know, is victory the kid coming to the altar and giving his heart to the Lord on a Sunday? A lot of times that's what we celebrate. Yeah, victory. But when we walk out of here on Sunday, you know, then that child still walks out and struggles with the same thing. And, and we thank God did you, did, that victory didn't last very long. He wants more for you than that victory. He wants you to be more than a conqueror. He wants you to have more financially than just to pay the bills and then you have to worry about next month's. He wants more for you than for you to just get this doctor's diagnosis saying you're in remission, but not have to, you know, the doctors always say, but we're going to have to keep a watch on it. We're just happy to get in remission. What does victory look like? I want to tell you what victory looks like. This is what the Bible teaches all the way through. Victory looks like wherever it is, you are satisfied. Wherever you choose to be satisfied at, that's victory. If you're satisfied with your bills being paid, that's victory. If you're satisfied with you going into remission, that's victory. If you're satisfied with the argument and the strife being over, that's victory. Wherever you're satisfied is victory. Now the question is, are you satisfied? You're in here today. You're obviously, God has been faithful to you all along the way. You're, you're living, you're breathing, you might be battling and stuff, but you're, you're here today. Are you satisfied with just being here? Or is there a way for you to raise your expectations, to raise your faith to a place where there's more? Because the Bible said this, be it unto you according to your faith. See, you got to know who God is. God is able to do all that we've ever thought or even hoped for. But the problem is, God only has the ability to do what you're satisfied with. That's why the Bible says this. The Bible says, with long life, that's exciting, long life. Will I satisfy you? You realize long life can be a different, an age, everyone can be satisfied at a different age. I've been sitting in hospitals with people, you know, in their 50s, suffering and dealing with an attack from the enemy. And I've been sitting by their bed, praying with them, talking about them, saying, you know, let's believe God for a miracle. Let's keep. And this is what they would say. They'd say, you know, I'm just tired. I believe I'm ready to go home. And they would die. I've, we've been there many. I've been a pastor long enough now to be with a lot of families and watch people die. And their family members would be like, well, God failed us. You know, our, you know, God didn't, we lost this battle. No. Where are you satisfied? Whatever place you decide is good enough, that's where you stop. We talked about um, Abraham's father, Terah, where the Bible says he was going to Canaan. And when he got to Haran, the Bible says when he got there, he settled there. And the Bible says he died there. Now, did he have a decent existence and a decent life? Yes. Bible says when Abraham left, he had large amounts of bulls and love, but, but see, he was headed to Canaan. But he got halfway there and settled. How many areas in my life have I got halfway there and settled for? Because it was good enough. Got to a place where it was good enough for me. It was tolerable at that point. When you pulled the, the, the pain and the screeching of the strep throat down, pulled it away, I was satisfied. Instead of believing God to build my immune system up where I wouldn't get it again, you know, a month or two later I had it, and I started realizing, God's going to give me whatever I'll settle for. Because he can't do anything. The Bible says he can't do anything unless I'm willing to have faith in that area. But with faith, all things are possible. So my question is, where are you satisfied at? Another question to ask is, what area in life or place have you settled for? Because the enemy loves it when you settle. The enemy loves it when you give or leave on the ground things that God intended for you to have. I used to have a coach 
in high school. Now, you would look at me and not think I was much of a sports player. But there were some sports I could not play, but I had a football coach. We went to a very small school, a private school. I graduated with eight. So that meant it took my entire grade and the grade underneath me to be a football team. And so we, but we were, we had a sport, full sports, and we had a football team. Now, I'm a basketball player. That's what I enjoyed doing. And I, I, although I wasn't high, I was fast, and so I enjoyed basketball. That's where I enjoyed pulling into and I may not could have been good under the basket, but I'm telling you, you didn't want me to chase you all the way down the court because I was faster than a lot of them and those kind of things. So I was, I was a basketball player, but I had a football coach. His name was Coach Anderson, and he was a big old black guy. He had, he had fought in Vietnam. He got um, injured in Vietnam, and so he was on full disability. So he took this coaching thing a little bit more serious than I thought he should have took it because it wasn't that important to me, but it was his life. And he didn't, it, since he drew full disability, he gave every bit of his life to this football program. And I mean, looking back now, I'm so glad that God sends in guys that can do that in different areas. And um, so his life was football. And I wanted to tell him back then, look at me, because I, I graduated not weighing 96 pounds. I have gotten bigger since then. But when I graduated, I was a little bitty thing. And in my senior year, junior year, he used to push me all the time to be on this football team. So I was on the football team and he... Um, I'm telling you, he was all in, aggressive, all in. He was, like, had a deep voice, and he could holler at you, and he was ex-military, so he had the whole um, uh, boot camp thing going on with us, and he would intimidate you just looking your way. And he used to always tell me after every practice and every game, I'd come walking off poor and sweat, thinking I did the best I had done. And uh, every, time he, every time I walked by, he'd look at me and say, you're just not hungry. And I'd... I'd, I, it was probably one of the reasons why I didn't like him so much. He's like, he never had a good word to say to me. But every practice and every game, that was his thing. He said, you're just not hungry. Now, he praised all the other guys, and they were doing extremely well. And, you know, but he would just tell me, I'm just not hungry. You're just not hungry. I heard that thousands of times during my junior and senior year of football. And I didn't look into that and understand the depth of this thing. And the truth is, I wasn't hungry. I didn't care how good I did on the football field. The only reason why I played football is because if I didn't get involved in all the sports, they weren't going to let me start on the basketball team. I knew that. So I had to play football to play basketball. But Coach Anderson would tell me constantly over and over again, you're just not hungry. And every time we lost a game, this way he'd say, y'all just wasn't hungry. Every time we won a game, he goes, finally you guys got hungry. And that was his thing. And I didn't get it for a long time. My question is, are you guys hungry? Because what you got to know is this. The reason why you've been fighting the devil so hard in the areas you've been fighting him for is because the devil knows what potential you have. And the reason why he's coming at you the way he's coming at you is not where you've been. He's not coming at you the way he's been coming where you are. He's been coming at you the way he's been coming at you because he knows where you can go. Your future is what he's afraid of. He's not afraid of what you're doing right now. That's why you have the ability and the process to be able to do it. He's scared of what you can become and what God, he knows God is going to do through you. And when you get this into your understanding that God is, I mean, the devil is fighting you not because of where you are now or where you even came from. That's the, where you came from is in the past. You're not dealing with what you're dealing with because of mistakes you've made. That's covered. God already shed his blood. You're not dealing with what you've been going through because of the situation going on. You're dealing with what you're dealing with because your future tomorrow, God has such great things in store for you. The Bible says your latter will be greater than your former. God, in the, in the kingdom of God, your tomorrow will always be better than your yesterday. And if you can't see that, you will never be hungry. But the Bible tells us a secret on how to be blessed. That's the word it used there, blessed. And you know, when you do the research on blessed, it means this, lacking no good thing. How many of you guys like to get to a place where you lack no good thing? Everything in your life is good. Well, you got to understand, that is God's intention for you. His intention for you is to lack no good thing. So the question is this, what am I satisfied not having? Because God's plan for me is to bless me. I can show it to you. In um, the most famous sermon that Jesus preached, they call it the, ser the greatest sermon ever. Is found in Matthew chapter 5. 
And in Matthew chapter 5, it's titled the Sermon on the Mountain. Now, I guess they call it that because he was standing on a mountain when he gave it. Some people call it the greatest sermon ever written. But Jesus goes into detail at the beginning of it, telling you that he wants you blessed over and over again. Then he goes into detail telling you how he can bless you. In other words, I want to bless you, but you have to be willing to do this to get it. And if you've reached a place of satisfaction in your life, I hope the Holy Spirit will stir something inside of you today. Because victory will be the picture of where you're satisfied at. At whatever level of life you choose to be satisfied, that's the level of life you will live. But if you're not satisfied, if there's something going on in your life, there's some area, something, you know, with relationships or job or friends, if you're not satisfied, I want you to know something. God has something more for you. If you will go to Matthew chapter 5, and verse 6. It says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. So I love this. In the beginning of this beatitude, he says this. He says, blessed, which means lacking no good thing. In other words, God wants you to have no good thing, but you have to do this. You have to be hungry. He says you have to hunger and thirst for righteousness. And then the promise of that is, what does it look like where it says, no, where what does no, lacking no good thing look like? He gave you another picture of it here. He says, all right, lacking no good thing are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be completely satisfied, is what one translation says. In every area of your life, God is able to satisfy you. So my question is, what level are you satisfied at? I'm telling you, there are lots of areas in my life I want more. I want more. I want more not because I'm greedy. I want more not because I'm, I'm selfish or materialistic. I want more because I want to be able to do more, mean more, accomplish more. I want to be able to affect more. I'm telling you, see, what the reason why you have more inside of you, you need to know this. Because it's the way God made you. The way God made you, he made you with the desire for more. Because that's what he created every living thing on this planet to do is to produce more. If you go back into Genesis, it says this. It says when he started creating things, he put into it a systematic way that everything he made that was living, it had the ability to produce more. And what, what they had the ability to produce is more like themselves. Now, this first of all takes me evaluating myself and see, what am I? Because this is the truth reality. How many of us in here claim to be born-again Christians, claim to be ch children of God, claim to be what God has called us to be, and we're trying to take steps to go that way, but we haven't produced one single Christian in the last 12 months. Because the Bible says this. The Bible says that we will produce after our own kind. So I want to, even in my Christian walk, if I'm not producing other Christians... Parents, if I'm not raising children to fear the Lord, if, if, if a worker, if I'm not at work sharing my faith and no one can tell it, then I'm not being what God created me to be. That, people say, God, tell me what you put me on this earth to be. First of all, he put you on the earth to produce after your own kind. So whatever you are, you need to begin to focus on, I need to produce this everywhere I go. Now, if you're bitter and cantankerous, it's truthful. You hang around a bitter and cantankerous person, and before long, everybody in that room will be bitter and cantankerous. How many of you have been there before? You produce more. So my question is, what are you, number one? Then number two, are you satisfied producing at the level you produce? I'm not. But the Bible says that God wants, me, wants to bless me to a point that I'll be completely full. My part is this. I have to be hungry. Now, you guys are lucky because I got online this week and I ordered some chocolate fragrance oils. And when I got to the point of this service, they were about to shoot through these air vents and we were about to make this place smell like chocolate. But Amazon messed up and they're not going to be delivered till tomorrow. I was, because researching things that stir up hunger, they said the smell of chocolate is the number one smell that makes people hungry. I was going to have you guys so hungry, your mouth was going to be water, and you would have never known it through the rest of this service, but they didn't, they won't deliver till tomorrow. So let you know it's coming, you just may not know when. But hunger is something that can be controlled. Now what I want to talk about is this. Are you satisfied or are you hungry? Because as long as you're hungry, the Bible says that you can be blessed. 
And the Bible says, as long as you're hungry, God can fulfill you. The problem with it is, a lot of us aren't hungry anymore. We've gotten to the place where we've gotten full. And because we've gotten full, God has not had the ability to pour anything else into our lives because we're satisfied. I'll show it to you in the Scripture. The Bible says, the woman that needed um, to pay her bills and she didn't have anything, she said, go get all the pots you can get. So she went and got filled her house up with pots. And the Bible says, when the pots were there, the oil started flowing. It says, and the oil poured until they were all filled. When there was no, nowhere else to put the oil, God don't waste anything. You need to understand that God does not waste a single thing. So if you're full where you're at right now, if you're satisfied, where, the reason why God can't put anything else in your life is because you're not hungry. As long as you're hungry, God will satisfy. The thing about hunger is this, it's different than appetite. See, appetite, a lot of times as Christians, we, we get hungry. We think we're hungry because we like church and we um, you know, like reading the Bible. And there's not, we like going to prayer meeting. And we like the idea of God giving us more and doing. But the thing about it is it's just an appetite. You know, sometimes I've got an appetite for certain things and I don't got an appetite for something else, but I'm still usually eating. Because if you ever quit eating for a long enough period of time, you die. Appetites are desires. Last night, in the middle of the night, I got up and I said, Jen, I got to go get some milk because we got some pecan cookies in the cabinet, and I've got an appetite. I want them pecan cookies. And Jen said, you're not leaving. It's too late. Lay down. And so I wanted it, but it was just a want. Now, there's a difference in hunger because, see, you can just want something, and just because you want it doesn't make it hunger. Hunger is different than appetite because appetite is something that you, you want or you would like to have or would be nice. Hunger is something that if you don't get it, you will die. It is a need. It is a must. And if you don't eat, then you will die. They say you can live, you know, um, 40 days without food, three days without water, when, when if you can only live three minutes without air. You know, there's the old story where the young monk walked up to the big monk and said, hey, um, man, I want to know the knowledge and all that just like you. So he said, great, come with me. They walked over to the water trough, grabbed him by his head and slammed it under the water. The young monk started kicking and squirming, trying to get loose, and the old monk just held him there and held him there and held him there. And he was kicking his head, trying to splash and trying to do it, fighting every way he could. And finally, when his body went limp, the old monk pulled his head up out of the water. He said, why did you do that? He said, there's a fly in here. He said, he said, because when you get to where you want knowledge as bad as you wanted that next breath, he says, you won't have to come to me to get it. You'll get it on your own. I want you to understand something. A lot of times on Sunday mornings, we come in here hoping to get a word or wanting to get a little message or maybe we want somebody to pray for us, but I want you to know something. If you'll get yourself to a point where you have to have it, you have to have that word to get through what you're going through. You have to get a prayer to be able to get what you got. You have to have it. Then you're going to find out what hunger is, and then the Bible says God will fill you. Hunger is completely different than appetite, and I want you to know that hunger is a sign of health. You find somebody that never is hungry, you find somebody that's very sick. Christians in the church. If I find Christians that aren't very hungry, I find Christians that are very, very weak. When, you, when people get to the latter ends of their life and also when people go through sicknesses like cancer and things, and the doctors always watch, and one of the main questions is this, are they eating? As a parent, we watch our babies and you know, we know something's wrong when our kids don't want to eat anymore and they're not hungry because it's a sign there's something wrong and death is coming at the door. I want you to know that if you're a Christian here and you've been satisfied and you hadn't wanted anymore for a long time, there's something wrong. There's something missing in your life. But God says, I will feel the hungry. When I was preparing, I kept hearing Coach Anderson say in my head, you're just not hungry. You're just not hungry. That used to make me mad. Hopefully this morning when I ask you, are you hungry, it makes you excited because if you can hunger, the Bible says, God can give you more. You know, the biggest enemy of hunger is self-perception. And when you're dealing with hunger with 
teenagers and, you know, even adults, there's a such thing called an eating disorder. And eating disorders are caused by self-perceptions. You know, you find a rail thin girl standing in front of a mirror. If she's got an eating disorder, she'll stand in front of the mirror weighing 50 pounds and think she's fat. Or you find someone that is so overweight, when they look in the mirror, they think they're healthy. Self-perception affects hunger greatly. And what you need to know about this is, you need to know about yourself is, God has already made you a winner. Most of us lose hunger because the enemy convinces us that we're, we've already gotten more than we deserve. We've already gone as far as we can go, and we don't deserve anything else. And a lot of us have spiritual eating disorders because when we look in the mirror of the Word, we don't think we could ever deserve or God could ever use us to do that. I want you to know something. The single fact that you're even here today is proof you're a winner. Hey, we hope you enjoyed that teaching. I believe God used His Word to speak to you while we were in this service. And if you're there at home, if there's a desire in you, you know that God has meant for more for you. God has purpose more in your life and you're just not living and during this uh, this show you've realized that you know there's a desire for you to want more be more and allow God to do more in you once you know you're spiritually hungry and the Bible says that God will meet you if you're hungry he will fulfill you if you're hungry and he will bless you if you're hungry so I want to pray with you right now you may be sitting there at home and you may be hungry just needing a relationship with God I want to pray with you if you don't know who God is and You've got this desire, this hole in your life, and you want to know who God is. Let me pray with you now. Father God, I just pray that as they're sitting there at home watching this program or at work or wherever they are, that you're beginning to stir within them a spiritual hunger. And Lord, your word says that if we will hunger and thirst, that you will fill us, Lord. I ask you right now, if they don't know who you are, as they ask you to come into their life, that you will fill them from their head to the top of their head to the soles of their feet. God, I thank you that you are the only thing that can satisfy the needs that we have. And Lord, we turn to you for our feeling as we stay hungry for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, if there's anything we can pray with you about, if there's anything we can do for you as a ministry, please call or get on the website and let us know. God bless you. Have a great rest of your day. Hi, I'm Pastor Jerry Abrams. Thanks for watching Victory today. Victory is a church that's all about people, all about excitement, all about what God's doing in your life. We want to invite you back to watch each week for another exciting time together. To find out more about Victory, give us a call and let us know how we can be a part of your family. God bless you and thank you for watching the program today.